welcome back to Lone Gamers the Apocalypse. Today we are playing Wander Home. We are joined by Sarah playing Syl, a vagabond raven. Seppi playing Millet, an exile skunk. And Doug playing Keller, a firelight bobcat. We have our world set and we're ready to start. Are you three ready? Okay. No. Well, <laughs> thank me. you for watching. Uh, One Gamers <laughs> the Apocalypse. Yes, yes, yes. Let's let's okay. go into this chaos. All right. Sill, Millet, and Keller have been traveling along the uh, North Road for a while now. We talked a little bit in our last episode how you know each other just a little bit. Uh, wondering if, if uh, Doug, you could tell me how Keller, I guess you should probably collaborate on this with Millet, but how Keller and Millet met each other. Um, I think most of the folk that Keller meets... He meets um, through travel. Uh, I think as a firelight, a lot of what Keller does is um, travel from place to place. And uh, it's kind of like, I guess I picture his him as a firelight is kind of like a, like a guide, like someone who helps people get from A to B. Um, not that I think everybody in this world is probably pretty familiar with that, but maybe it's more helpful at like, night because of his firefly and his lantern so yeah would that would that service have been any help or maybe it was just coincidence that Keller and Millet met I was playing a, a very sad and long concerto and uh, your firefly's name is what uh, Cyril. that's uh, Cyril Cyril uh, came barging uh, into the uh, the opening on the stream that I was uh, on a rock. Um, and I had just relegated myself to waiting until dawn or maybe giving up entirely. And, uh, and then uh, you had encouraged me to walk across the, the stream, but watching my footing in a very particular way. And, and I thought that was as good a reason as any to continue. Mm -hmm. That's great. Pulls all of our character building into. And Syl. We know that Syl had a partner at one point. Yes. But Syl, I don't know. How does Syl feel around people? Does she... Uh, okay. Sorry, do they... Uh, travel with other people often? How do they find themselves hanging out with Millet and Keller? Not often, but in the search for redemption that Syl is currently on, they heard about a place at the end of the world that they could go to retrieve the ruby that they were told or said to have uh, stolen so they can bring it back and show that it wasn't them. And they heard that Keller was one of the best at guiding folks and came to Keller and will occasionally beg him to take them to the end of the world. Even though Keller, does the end of the world exist? Um, I think that it does. I think that maybe Keller has not been there, but is confident that he knows the way. Mm -hmm. But he won't go there, right? He won't. He won't go there because still, so, uh, you've made an oath that you won't go there, even though you need you, to go. You there. made no. a you made an oath you won't go yeah. there. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking back through my notes. So yeah, uh, Keller. I think Keller got pretty close once, and uh, there was an incident. He won't go. Oh. 
But that is where my redemption lies, Killer. That is where my redemption lies. But you didn't actually see it. You just felt like just over the edge, that was the edge of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, one more hill, and Keller would have been there, but there there was an incident between him and that hill. Ambiguity is the crossroad demon's volleyball. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ambiguity is also a a strategy for stalling while I think of the incident. (laughs) The three of you turn a corner in the forest. The road has been long and not particularly hard. You've passed travelers going... Uh, in both directions, some going a little bit slower than you, some going opposite. On the sides of the road, you spot large mushrooms, tall, towering mushrooms reaching high into the sky. Every once in a while, you see the a spot of litter, uh, wrappers from sweet things uh, here and there scattered on the sides of the road. And as you turn this corner, you come to a crossroads and at this crossroads uh, at this crossroad you spot a number of colorful caravans just stopped uh, uh, almost uh, almost like a small town of, of wanderers here uh, so my and- feeling is that Sil won't leave us alone that I'm tra- traveling with Keller because Keller's uh lightning bug is uh got good musical taste Mm -hmm. um yeah he uh often tries to be uplifting and i politely nod sil is infamously uplifting (laughs) and therefore irritating at all junctures (laughs) although i have a bad feeling about this caravan there are quite a few of them actually Uh, you see people setting up stalls it looks like they're setting up some sort of market and there's uh there are all these tall tall mushrooms around you um, in a variety of colors and one of them stands out much much higher than the rest of them towering over this this wide wide crossroads where the roads going east and west meet the roads going north and south along the sides of the road you spot a few small uh, at, at first glance they they look like cairns but the stones look almost like petrified mushrooms too um, a little bit ominous a little bit weird and in the dappled light coming down from the mushroom caps way up above every once in a while you spot some movement in the forests but as you get closer you see lots of people they look friendly they look happy they look like they are going to be selling some things telling some stories their happiness is born out of ignorance I will step forward their happiness is a front I will step forward as this is the only source of income that I have. And I slowly make my way through the throng, uh, looking for a place to captivate most of the people with my music. And I always start by having my tail hold up uh, underneath my cloak so that I can start playing. And then it slowly uh, pulls back so that it starts muffled and quiet and then everybody is caught up in the uh, rapturous melancholy that I deliver everywhere I go. I pull an apple from my cape and start eating it. Millet finds a little mushroom stump, uh, not dead center in the crossroads, but pretty close where people are walking all around. Um, you sit down and start playing? Yes. Okay. What is, uh, 
what does Keller do while Millet sits down and begins to play on uh, their violin? Um, <clears throat> Keller sees that his two traveling companions are kind of going off and doing their own thing. I think there's maybe an acknowledging kind of uh, nod that this is a good place to take five or ten or wh- however long. Um, and uh, this game is so much about like kind of like it seems like it's very much about um, thoughtful interaction and like peaceful introspection and like just enjoying like the world around you. Yeah. Are you thinking about taking a moment to watch a tiny moment of beauty or something? Yeah. I kind of like that. I mean, I think that (laughs) they're, they're traveling, they're taking a rest. I think Keller's going to go. And uh, let's see. Uh, Walk over to one of these um, caravans. It's colorful. Um, I think, can I, am I, I can like make up stuff around in the world a little bit. Sure. I think that this caravan, this cart um, is selling some goods out of it. And it, can it be um, pulled by a very large muscular beetle? Absolutely. Cool. Um, the, I think uh, the person unloading things is a pangolin. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, Keller likes, he likes bugs. He's going to go over and just like put a hand on a furry beetle leg and give it a little pat and take a a moment to look around at the, uh, you said look around and admire the the beauty of this little um, impromptu setup. Yeah. Tell me about the beauty or the grandeur. (laughs) Oh, what do you want? The beauty or the grandeur? Um, That's that's up to you. (laughs) um, I think that there's like, like a like a quiet beauty and like the um the kind of impromptu nature of this gathering of of people that might not always be together uh the colorful um carts and and the soft music that begins to fill the air from um from millet and uh what time of day is it i think it is early evening the sun is still up, but mm-hmm. maybe an hour or so before nightfall. Okay. So, yeah, it's this kind of, uh, I don't know if witching hour is the right time. Maybe that's like midnight. Um, golden hour? The golden hour. Yeah. The best time to, to take your photographs. Uh, mm-hmm. And like you can see the first kind of uh, glints of lights, whether they be firefly or uh, supernatural kind of uh, flickering in the distant mushroomed foggy wood. Take a token. All right. That was a, I earned that token. I went on forever. <laughs> the music that I'm playing is very reminiscent of uh, sweet times that will never be repeated again. It is functionally this world's fantasy equivalent of the first 15 minutes of the movie up. (laughs) So you will see lots of children uh, in rapture and wondering why their grandparents are sobbing deeply. And you're not very sure why people give money to, uh, to Millet. It's whether the music is that good or they just need them to stop. And so this is also the only instance when Millet will take off their mask is one playing something so profoundly true and honest. And that is the mask is where they collect the coins and then they take those coins in the mask uh, and then uh, adhere it back to their face after they're done playing. While Millet is playing, what is Syl doing? Syl is walking around, observing what's for sale and attempting to find someone who might give them a fortune and give them almost a hint of where they can go next on their journey of redemption. Still eating this apple and occasionally tacking up a wanted poster 
of them. <laughs> Wanted poster of themselves. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, I think that Sill spots a diamond back. That looks like they might know a thing or two. Sill's going to kind of circle around the area of this diamond back and observe if they are telling fortunes or just all knowing and like listen in on what it is they're telling others before deciding if it's something they want to go over and do or not. She is not necessarily telling fortunes, but she is speaking truthfully and taking her time and moving carefully through, through the crowd, um, speaking as if she knows everybody here. Mm-hmm. Syl's going to watch for a while and kind of listen to Millet's melody as it drifts on the wind and think longingly about times and joy gone by and slowly slink up to the diamond back and kind of appear by her side and cock ahead. You have overheard at this point that this diamond back's name is Wanda and that she, uh, as you sort of slink up next to her, she turns to look at you and says, Hello. You must be new here. Must I? Well, I've never seen your face around here. Ah, I know everybody who comes to the crossroads. Wanda, I know you well. I know that you have wisdom and you speak truth. Her rattle shakes for a, a second. Oh, I see things, but I don't see things, if you know what I mean. Mm, I think you see more than you think you see. And I'm going to pull uh, an apple out of my out of my cloak and hand it to her. <laughs> um, she wraps her tail around the apple and puts it in a bag. You know my name. You must know that I am the organizer of the market. Why, of course I do, and what a fine market you've organized. It just so happens you're a day early. They won't be selling anything until tomorrow, but if you're looking for something in particular, I can point you towards it. Hmm. Wanda, I am looking for my way. My way in life, I seem to have lost it. Have you, perchance, found it? (laughs) Well, I haven't. But many people come and go from the market, and you may find somebody going in the same direction as you. I go to the end of the world. And the festivities go to the end of the night. (laughs) Wanda, you are wise. That is why they call you Wanda the Wise, I see. (laughs) Some do, yes. I certainly do. Well, I have to check in with the rest of the sellers. Please enjoy the evening. There will be fires, and perhaps the small, many-faced gods will show up. The lightning dancers. Mm. Yes. Perhaps they will. I'm going to bow deeply to Wanda and produce a rose from my belt and hand it to her. Uh, It's an iron rose. You sure it's not an orchid? I'm sure it's not an orchid. Okay. Why, thank you. Meanwhile, in the center of this crossroads, Millet uh, puts down his violin and goes down to gather the mask with the coins And when they look up, they see another skunk right in front of them. I raise one eye tentatively for one 
briefest of moments and then hurry to put my mask back on and hide under my cloak. He raises a hand as if to stop, try to stop you. He says, hey, now, hey, hi, that was, that was beautiful. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. I have a good shuffle. evening. I, I shuffle around a little bit. And, uh, and when he gives up, that's when my stare then like fixates on his back. Like if he looks back, he cares enough to try harder. Uh, I think he approaches a llama and sort of gives a little bit of a shrug when, when the llama looks questioningly at him and then looks over his shoulder. At me or back at? At you. Oh, then I pretend that I was accidentally wor- looking in that direction and that this is an accident. And then I, I look back a little bit, at, 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 like being caught that I... I uh, somehow noticed it, him again. What uh, what will Millet do with the coins that they've earned? Well, Sil tends to steal things, um, and that's a problem, or con people out of it. So a certain amount of that money has to go to that. Uh, I've got to feed my number one fan, which is the lightning bug, Keller's lightning bug. So that's, that's, that's another thing that we've got to do. Uh, got to save to bribe the constable because, um, we're constantly getting into trouble. Um, that's very unfortunate. Um, otherwise I have, um, I have a fund for, uh, uh, a coffin and a tombstone that, I'm keeping. Great. As you're thinking about where your money goes, coffins and tombstones, you glance around this square again. Um, the people who were listening to you uh, have have departed a little bit. They're just sort of shuffling around now in their own small groups and conversations. Did I feel as though uh, for the level of play and the level of um, what's the word I'm looking uh, for like general wealth and prosperity of that that I was paid in recompense or did I feel like I paid uh, played poorly and I was rewarded poorly or what what is the level did I manage to manifest this Was my only tip the one the male skunk was going to give me until he didn't realize I was painfully shy? (laughs) How do you think you played? I think I I played uh, to my truth. Mm -hmm. And I think the only moment that happens is when I'm in front of a lot of people and I can share in my music exactly how isolated we all are. I think that you were paid adequately, but not well. Not like, not not a ton of money, but probably appropriate to the the people who are here. I think looking okay. at the coins, you see things from uh, numerous countries, from from uh, all over the the neighboring countries. So maybe my tombstone won't get the fanciest font treatment. Maybe not. I understand. Around this crossroads, which is almost like this big open square, you spot these little little stone cairns that you recognize as shrines to small and forgotten gods. As you um, as you think about death. Okay, well, I will definitely give the gods their due. Right now? Uh yeah, I will walk up um and uh, as I'm placing them secretly, I, without my own knowing, I'm looking back at that, uh, that, that male skunk who wanted to introduce himself, but doesn't understand how to interact with introverts. 
uh, the <laughs> skunk, the skunk, and the llama are uh, setting up a bonfire off in one of the corners of this this space. What are you leaving okay. for the gods? Um. Uh, I'm going to leave the coins from the uh, pairing of smallest child to oldest patron. Okay. Take it to one, the one who cried the deepest and the, the child who was the most confused. You that get a token level of on, for, okay. Yeah, that for, level uh, of honesty, I yeah. feel as though is the most uh, pleasing to the forgotten gods since it's something about memory. Keller is hanging out with a bug. Mm -hmm. After he takes this moment to observe uh, what's next, I think think at this point, uh, Millet's music is almost done. Mm Mm-hmm. Jumping back in time just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think hmm. I think that Keller is going to maybe um, take a glance around and maybe restock a supply or two. Um, and then I guess him and the party, depending on if they're still around or what they're doing, will have to decide if they journey on or if they uh, want to hang out for a while or if they want to set up camp for the evening. So the person setting up closest to you looks like they are setting up um, dried mushrooms and teas and herbs and that sort of thing. Um, that's that that pangolin. Mm-hmm. Um, you would not have overheard the conversation, but it also does not look like anybody's buying anything right now. Um, mm-hmm. It looks like tents are being set up and and uh, no real products are going out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think in his like, his uh, kind of uh, look around at this whole place. I think maybe look see. Yeah, he's taking think, a look see. Uh, in taking that look see, I think that he has deduced that perhaps nothing is for sale tonight. Um, just seeing that they're 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 working. Uh, they're not vendoring. Um, but he does see this pangolin, and uh, I think maybe this pangolin has something that. Uh, he might want. Um, Tell me more. I think the pangolin is, you know, unpacking. There's various uh, jars, um, bottles of things. I think that uh, Keller pretty quickly can recognize a bottle which is uh, filled with nectar, which is one of um, his fireflies' favorite uh, treats. It's also just nutrition. It's food. Um, he's gonna take a walk over to this pangolin. It's a Hello there. Uh, I can see that you're not quite set up to sell today, but uh, would you Yeah, market's not until tomorrow. Uh, Well, well, maybe we'll be here tomorrow, but in case we're not, would you mind parting with one of those bottles of nectar? Would they? Well, it's kind of against the rules. We're not supposed to sell until tomorrow. They, They keep track of these things. But I mean, uh, what are they going to they're taking money out of your hand? Come on. Well, yeah, they organize this thing. They put up posters in in Willowbriar and the other towns around. Hmm. Will I have but to spend my token? You look like I I just can't say no. All right. Uh, what do you need? Let's see. Uh, well, I definitely want that bottle of nectar and uh what else do i want um can i get a like a an herb that is like a a it's like uh incense kind of it's used to burn for like a ritualistic or prayer i don't have anything like that but um you might want to see Pierre, he's setting up across the way. He's with, uh, that raccoon over there. He's got stuff like that. Hmm. Well, 
hopefully he'll sell to me because you're not open today but uh yeah hopefully but since you will i'll take that nectar off your hands now you know uh pierre he yeah all right don't tell every man everyone else i'm telling you this but the way to get pierre to like you you should kind of tell him a story Hmm. Story, huh? I could probably cook something up. Yeah, they're going to be setting up these campfires all around the place. If 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 you or I saw you had some other companions, if any one of you is a storyteller, you could you you know hang up by a campfire, tell a story, make sure make sure Pierre is there, and, okay. and then and then he might he might uh, he might just give it to you. Hmm. Like stories that much. Okay, it can uh, kind of collects them. I can respect Pierre's uh, tastes and appreciation for uh, the arts, as that sounds like an art to me. Um, okay. Noted. Yeah. Well, hmm. who of our group is probably the best storyteller? I was going to say, I would think that would be Millen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so Keller Keller gets his nectar. Mm-hmm. You got a little bottle of nectar. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So Keller, this bobcat, uh, he's got his big staff. He's got his his gloves, uh, shining eyes. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me what else what what else he looks like. Where where Cyril hangs out while Keller's doing his business. Um. Yeah, uh, I think during the day, um, Cyril spends actually a lot of time in a uh, a large, um, like a uh, side saddle sack. Um, Cyril doesn't like the light too much um, and sleeps most of the day in this uh, side saddle sack. Sometimes sticks their little head out and uh, you know grabs a leaf off of a branch and chews it, and then goes back to sleep. And as the sun has gone down, is getting closer to down, I think when they first stopped, Cyril kind of fluttered out of the bag. And um, we'll kind of keep a, a watchful eye, almost like a like a pet bird for a human or something. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that they've like, been... Like on your shoulder, like a pirate, or fluttering around above you? A little of both. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, right now they've been kind of fluttering from... Uh, cart to cart, and I think maybe fluttered to the closest cart to Millet while Millet was playing um, since they enjoy the, the tunes. And uh, did you ask me what Keller looks like? Mm-hmm. Yep. They're, they're uh, kind of a brown and gray uh, lynx, mostly brown and gray uh, with some darker brown and black spots and kind of like uh, puffy tufts that come off of the bottom of their chin. Um Aside from the warm gloves, they've got a uh, a long um, overcoat, almost like a like a full body kind of poncho with a large scarf. Um, yeah, I think not only uh, it was established in game generation that we had appropriate uh, hardy clothing, um, and yeah, I think uh, Keller often has clothing like that because Keller grew up in like a cooler mountain town. Okay, so um, is yeah. Keller a bobcat or a lynx? They're two. two they, they're totally Aren't they different. like the same thing? They're, no, they're totally different. Lynx okay. has the long, pointy ears with the little tufts at the end. Bobcat's more of just like a. Okay, okay, we're establishing it here. We'll say bobcat. Okay. Keller is racist. <laughs> Can't tell the difference between a bobcat and a lynx. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm just disappointed it, in Doug. Just... I apologize. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this anymore. Oh, I, oh we might gosh. have to cancel Doug for the next oh, game no. versus the apocalypse. He <laughs> might need a timeout. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, I think, is Keller going to wander over and tell Millet kind of this, this tidbit of information? Uh, you can. Keller is really good at spotting things as being a guide, and he's particularly good at reading 
uh, his poor, sad friend. <laughs> and so he notices that um, as I'm lingering and trying to figure myself out that I, can, I can't help but keep on looking at that male skunk every time the male skunk looks away. Yeah, uh, I, I think Keller walks over. Hey, how you doing, guy? You okay? Same as always. Uh, okay, because you you look a little. I mean, a little worse than normal. No <laughs> offense. That's a little, not not in a bad way. In a thank uh, you for your honesty, <laughs> Keller. I now I stop looking at the other like obviously if I look worse than normal that I obviously cannot face it so I've given up now on the skunk. You needed something. Uh, well, what I was hoping to help you. I think I've made things worse. Um, so maybe I'll ch- we'll change the. Uh, let's. Uh, you let's... need something, Keller. I can tell. What do you need? Hey. Uh. Well, those guys over there, those folks setting up the fire. Maybe uh, telling a, a story. Maybe an uplifting story. Maybe we can make. Maybe you can make up something a little can more. I them, can I? Can I? Can I tell them a story of my home? Is it a good story? Is it a? I mean, it's, I mean, it's well performed and well articulated. It's not a happy story, Keller. You shouldn't ask me for something okay. I can't do. I suppose that sad stories can be good stories so it's gripping it's honest it's true you know what that sounds actually a lot more interesting than a made-up happy story so yeah um people make up happy stories how do you do that uh maybe, please tell me i want to know well we usually start um with a lie yeah, we start with a lie, and then you follow it with another one, and then another one. And uh, how is that even believable? Well, sometimes you have to suspend your belief, but uh, I like. Oh, the... you put it out of mind. I can always put it out of mind. I get it now. Okay. Point me in the direction of these people that you want to give a devastating but gripping story to uh, well, about I think my home world. There's a, is it a, uh, those two raccoon and the llama. I think there's another person over there. They're, they just built that fire. Um, uh, and that raccoon, they're traveling over there. Maybe, maybe we set up for a couple hours. Maybe we stay the night here if we feel like it, but, um, I'm yeah. looking for Syl. Syl this is other... actually right next to you. <laughs> I'm now not looking for Syl. <laughs> <laughs> just as per the usual timing, I'm about to do something meaningful and true, and then Syl shows up, and then now Syl has shown up. That's right, Doug. That's, uh, Doug, do you realize nice. that you just put the skunk with the raccoon by saying that the llama's there? I thought you had already established that the nope. llama and the skunk were at the fire. <laughs> nope. But looking across the across the way as a the sky gets a little bit dimmer. You you do see that with that raccoon that that Keller is pointing out, the llama and the skunk. There's nothing to it but to do what I said I was going to do and then never look in the direction of the skunk again. That is just all that there is left for me. I, I wander. I start wandering over there uh, slowly, uh, but purposefully. Um, I know if you walk at a certain pace uh, that is just a little slower than people exe- expect and with purpose, especially in an area filled with life and people running around, people's attention will come to you and quietly, but fixatingly so. And so that is what I do as I start to approach this raccoon that I'm supposed to give a story to. Sill is uh, lurking in the shadows, and as uh, as he walks up, or yes, as he walks up, Sill just says, "I have a bad feeling about this." <laughs> How often does Sill's bad feelings become actually, or is that just something that Sill says? 
is 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 still one of those people who always says I have a bad feeling about this and it never comes to pass or is still one of those people who, who says this and it always happens. See, here's you would suspect from the amount of times that still says this that it would be something that they would just say except every time something bad comes to pass. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's ominous and uh, a little creepy, and Syl does not the understand weight. the power that they have. I feel the weight of the coins uh, close to my face, and like the, the the extra satchels that I use that weigh heavily on it because I have to keep the the money as close to it. And I'm like, I'm thinking about that fancy fancy font that I will never get, and then uh, and I I I I trust Sill's feeling. Despite the fact that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Can I do something, Mark? Yeah. Uh, so Millet is making uh, their way over to the fire um, kind of slowly and drawing people's eye and attention. And I think uh Keller's going to walk a little bit quicker towards the fire and comes up to this uh, batch of logs and sticks that have not been lit yet and asks, uh, do you need a hand? A hand lighting this. Uh, yeah, so you walk up to uh, the raccoon. Do you need a hand? And he says absolutely you can help sure yeah yeah there's more sticks over there they they've been gathering them one of the people uh brought them down down from the north good wood it's gonna burn all night great happy to do it uh you know this these these fires we do this every year and uh all these people come from all over the place and it's just great we get to see all all these old friends and man it's a lot of fun. You're new here. Yeah, I am new. I uh, well, we we were just passing through, um, but uh, happy to have stumbled upon such a interesting little festival. Um, I think we might stick around for a little bit. He looks over your shoulder at the very slow moving skunk behind you. You're free to join us. Functionally, Wait the. The, the, the functionally it's like in those vampire movies where the crowd is moving around but then the vampire is preternaturally still this is mm -hmm. this is a performance affectation that Millet has realized will draw people's attention uh, Millet because... is literally moving in slow motion and Sill has already across the other side of the fire just that kind seems of... That seems jumpy and explosive, so I will not do it. <laughs> I'm going to move very carefully and practically, getting people's attention in the way that I know best. And By, you're getting it. And I'm getting it. And then I, I look at the raccoon uh, and say, this is your fire. May I have your name? Yeah, I'm, I'm Pierre. Pierre. And that's... May, and he points at the llama, and and Joel, the skunk. Pierre. <laughs> That's what yeah. I tried to say. I was going to try to say Joel's name, but I couldn't do it. Uh, but that's all on the inside. Uh, and I'm like, oh my God. Um, someone has requested a story for you. May I tell it? You've got a story. Liar? Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we'll, Let's wait till it's a little darker. Uh, everybody's going to have some stories to tell, I, I hope. And uh, but yeah, this was uh, a request just for you, Pierre. Oh, would you will you, you sit and hear it? You don't want to tell it in front of everyone else. I do not look towards the skunk and I do not look towards the llama. And I say I just repeat myself very matter of factly. This is a request given for you. If you refuse it, I will. I will gladly go someplace else. Um, uh, having done my task as a traveling bard, I'll take it. Okay. 
Syl mutters to themselves, such drama, always. Do you need everyone else to leave? No, they can. Okay. This is yours. You may share it however you choose. I would like to share it with my friends. Then they may stay. And the, the three of you can join us. Always welcoming new friends. So as he says that, I start like under the giant cloak, strumming the violin in uh, asynchronous notes as I find my perch in on the oh, fire. You're it starting is- already. Okay, uh, I'll sit. And uh, it, again, this strange, otherworldly quality that I give, but this is all an affectation that I do not have any mystical powers because why would you want somebody with such crushing sadness to have any extra worldly abilities that seems like an awful combination for the world and so i uh i then after i i sit down i strum a a full chord that is musical and light and happy and it might be the happiest sound they've heard from me yet Friends, would you like to tell your story? Friends, let me tell you of my home world or my homeland, the fabled place called Camel Lost. Camel Lost with its King uh, Uther and his queen, Gwen the Deer, and then his most trusted compatriot, Prance a Lot. There's the story of sadness and betrayal and forlorn love. And so I start to tell the the story, of course, that King uh, Uther is a great warrior king, but has uh, chosen um, responsibility over love, which has left him alone. But his 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 stalwart companion, Gwen the Deer, uh, finds herself in a weak moment when Prance a lot cannot help but give in to his lustful desires for the queen. I think we all know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> have they heard the story of my homeland? Camel they have lost. not. No, and they're okay. very interested in hearing it. And okay. it, There's stories. It's the story of the war. It's a story of how this great betrayal uh, heart broke the king and the king became war sick and mad and all these kinds of things. And so it goes on as long as people's, as long as Pierre's interest uh, stays on me. Okay. You continue your story and the sun sets. People come in and out listening to bits and pieces. Uh, May the llama uh, moves off at one point and goes to talk to somebody else. But Pierre and Joel, and maybe Syl and Keller, if, if you like, uh, sit the whole time and, and listen. And as the sun sets, the uh, mushrooms, these, these big, tall mushrooms around you begin to glow faintly, and that giant one at the, at the corner of the crossroads glows like a, like a beacon in the darkness. Little shapes move off in the forest, and um, Keller's Firefly Cyril uh, lights up and starts flitting around in the sky above. And as Millet's story comes to an exciting climax, a, a battle with... Um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to come up with a name up, up, off the top of my head like like those ones... But the, the, this climax of a battle near the end of the story still sees a, a shape moving off in the, in the forest. Somebody's walking alone out there. And as you watch them, you see them turn their head towards you and their eyes glow with the firelight in the crossroads. Sill. So- We'll follow. Okay. 